Welcome back, Femme Fam. We have another fantastic guest for you today. Um, I'm really kind of excited about the trend that has happened this season with our guests because we've had a lot of like fellow podcasters or people that um, just have their own community. You know, like we had Noam with the backlot and our today's guest whose community is called Actors Rise. Um, she also has a newsletter, which we'll talk about on the show, which is amazing. I subscribe to it. I highly recommend it. Um, and her name is Jenna Doolittle. So Jenna is an actor. Um, she's also a proud member of SAG-AFTRA, and she is a volunteer and member of SAG-AFTRA's National Next Gen Committee, which is committed to um, bringing young people into SAG, making them aware of what the union can do for them. She's super passionate about it, and we talk a lot about that in the episode, which is awesome mm-hmm. because I learned a lot of things as someone who is looking to join SAG in the near future. Um, so that was very helpful for me. But Jenna's just, she's awesome. And she's I love the- do little that's doing the most yes (laughs) (laughs) I love her she's so passionate like just hearing the service the that she's doing to to really be a voice in the union is really incredible and and Mm it makes me want to join more that there are people like her advocating for actors rights and you know and protecting us from ourselves is something we talk about so I really really love that Yeah, I love her mindset about just all of it, which, you know, you guys will hear in the episode and everything. Um, But yeah, again, if you're not subscribed already to Actors Rise newsletter, by the end of this, you'll learn how to do that. Highly recommend if you are an actor, like to any capacity, I don't care if you are just doing like improv down the street, like if you're an actor at all, there is something you can absolutely benefit from this newsletter. In fact, even if you're not an actor and you're just in the industry in any capacity, there is something you can benefit from because there's a lot of mental health kind of things, a lot of finance kind of things, things that you don't necessarily have to be an actor to benefit from. Yes. So, so yes. Subscribe, you bitches. Okay. I love you guys. <laughs> Beth and fam. <laughs> Tune in. Yeah. I, I just think it's so cool what you guys are doing because you're giving so, so many resources and information and you're saying like, hey, we don't have all the answers, but like here's some other people who might. And actually now that like we've done some things where we do have some answers and we've learned along our journey and like we can help each other and help other people. And I I love that. I'm all about creating community as much as, as much as we can to support one another. Exactly. And that's why your uh, newsletter is such, like I was telling Carolina about it because she hadn't heard and I was like, oh, we got to get her on. Like her newsletter is great. I was like, this email, Carolina has so much in every single one. It's unbelievable. Like, well, thank you. I don't, where do you even get all those resources? Like, how do you get all that together? <laughs> well, let's take take um, it back. Tell us how that whole newsletter launched. Like, let's, yeah, let's hear start the from story. The beginning. Let's start from the beginning of that. Yeah, sure. So um, basically, I, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, I was getting all these panicked texts and phone calls from friends being like, I'm scared. Um, how do I do unemployment? How do I get a grant? I'm freaking out. I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. I was getting messages about like, where are these open calls happening, Jenna? Like what is going on? And so I was, just, I remember looking at my husband at the kitchen table and I was like, should I just start a newsletter and send people information? And he said, yes. And so I, I did. And I, um, just sent it to 36 people of my friends oh my and kind of made this MailChimp and sent out this information. You know, I've been a career coach for actors for a long time and I am a SAG after delegate and I worked in casting in the past and I produced theater. So I do have kind of a network of people and information that I knew other actors like didn't necessarily have. And I had the time to be quite honest, Mm -hmm. like I had time to do it. And it gave me a sense of purpose to give out this information and gave me something to do during the pandemic. So that's kind of how it began. Yeah, I love that. And I think you saying too, like it gave you a sense of purpose. That's a big thing for us as well. Like, cause we, when we started the podcast, you know, we wanted to share information with people, but part of it was selfish. We just wanted to build our audience as well, you know, and get more followers and whatever. But like, yeah, when we realized how people were responding to it and how grateful they were and like how interested they were, we were like, Oh shit, this is awesome. <laughs> like it feels so totally. good. And it's like, you know, with people that go out and volunteer and stuff, it's that same 
idea, you know, to give without expecting anything in return. And it's, yeah, it's really fulfilling. (laughs) It's so fulfilling. And I think I learned more than anything this past year is that like the more that you give, the more you receive in return, Mm -hmm. you know, things happened in my career this year and in my relationships that I just would never have thought would happen from a newsletter. Like it it just kind of boggled my mind. So that's definitely a lesson. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. To see that it then really blew up. I think I was reading some of your articles and like, you like blew the fuck up. I mean, you blew the fuck up, (laughs) girl. Yeah, it it was, it was crazy. And I mean, I'm really grateful. And I think a lot of it is that I share not only resources um, and things to hopefully make people smile and things to keep people engaged and thinking about their mental health, but I shared my own journey along the way. And I think that helps people, you know, and I'm not perfect and I don't have all the answers either. And I make mistakes and, you know, I shared days when I didn't work out or days where I had to make myself get out of bed and sharing that. I think that vulnerability hopefully made people feel like they, they knew me and they weren't alone. And that was something that I was really striving for with the newsletter. No, absolutely. That's also kind of to take it, how we relate to it with our podcast journey. Like we thought we had to be the teachers at first. And then we realized, no, we can literally just say, Hey, this is what we don't know, or this is what we're struggling with. And that totally resonates with people a lot more. And then finding like, you know, the resources to add value and information to like help. But I a hundred, especially during this, like the last year, just anyone feeling like, wow, I'm not the only one feeling like this is, is such a comfort in itself. So I think that's, that's such, I think definitely a key to why that you blew up so much. Absolutely. Thank you. And I just always tell people, it's like, you, you might have a kernel of an idea and just do it. Like I could have easily said, you know what, I'm not going to send this newsletter. Who am I to do this thing? And it's really helped (laughs) me find my voice. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, you know, helped build my um, coaching business so much and really helped me create more friends and community. And yeah, it's been really amazing. Yeah. It's again, it's kind of going back to the whole, like giving without expecting something in return. Like if you give in that way, you're going to get something back anyway. Like it's going to pay off for you, you know, and whether that's expanding your network, you know, whatever it is beyond just like the feeling of like feeling good about it, you know, like you're going to get something out of it. And I'm sure it's like, yeah, completely expanded your network. Like that's a great way to meet people and like any of the companies and the classes and stuff that you share on the newsletter. I'm sure they're super grateful and you've got that connection. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fulfilling to be able to help small businesses during this time because everyone was struggling, you know? So being able to connect people and help people make money and put money in their pockets has been really, really cool too. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, Shout out the different categories real quick, if you could, that like, what would someone who isn't on your newsletter see? Like what are the types of resources? There's an actor business section. So that's primarily focused on things like, um, business of acting coaches or, um, learning about producing or learning about, um, how to create your own content, that kind of thing. And then there's uh, actor creative section, which has anything from like the artist way class that's happening to a cool article from the New York times about like how to write poetry for yourself, just like prompts and inspiration. Love it. There's a cat. Yeah. There's a catch up section that shares industry news that happened in the past week. I make you smile section, which is like funny memes. They're often industry related (laughs) things like hashtag booked and stuff like that. Um, There's a a mental health section that's like mindset to keep you focused, whether it's articles or talks that are happening. Um, There's a casting director says section. There's my favorite things section. There's other things too. There's it's, it's pretty robust (laughs) to be honest. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a financial resources section. So you can find info on like grants that are happening and, um, again, talks and information about how to save money or things like that. Some of them are industry specific and some of them are things that anyone could do no matter what industry they're in. I love that. Yeah. Cause we have a lot of creatives on like who tune into this show and they might not specifically be an actor, but they can, we always talk back, like the actor struggle is the filmmaker struggle in like certain ways. Yeah. There's so much like crossover. So well, being a multi hyphenate is so kind of where we're going yeah. in our industry. And, you know, I produced theater for years and I just oh. during the pandemic was a producer on a short that 
I was also in, which was amazing and such a, a learning experience for all of us, I think. <laughs> but we just got into the Brooklyn Film Festival. So oh, yeah. yes, <laughs> that's amazing. But yeah, I, I mean, I think it's all about um, the newsletter itself is really for everyone, not just for actors. There's a writer's section as well. My husband's a writer, so I get insight from him sometimes on things to put in there. So yeah, I do think there's something for everyone in the entertainment industry. Yeah, yeah it definitely sounds like it. Yeah, you're covering business mindset. You have so I love that you, it shows your creativity in the mm-hmm. in building it. Like I can just the way you were talking about it, you found some fun things that you enjoy and that's another great way to like get recognition or get people to not not just vulnerability but things that you like. There's chances yeah. are that someone else is going to find it enjoyable too. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. that's the goal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Also, so I'm a Virgo. I'm super like type A organized. And I so much appreciate that you do have things organized into sections. Because I know like for me, you know, I get so many emails every day. And when I see that, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like resources. I'm excited to read this. But then sometimes it's like, oh, I have so many emails. So yeah, having it like separated like that really helps my mind. And I'm like, okay, I can skip over this section today. Oh, this is what I'm really looking for today. Or, you know, so thank you. (laughs) That's great. I I appreciate that. I joke that I'm like a recovering perfectionist. (laughs) Um, I'm, I'm, I kind of like pretend that I'm type A and I tend to play a lot of, it's like my branding as an actor is I play very type A kind of neurotic characters and I kind of present that way, but it's kind of a mess behind the scenes to be honest. I'm the opposite. I I try not to play so type A and be a little more chill, but inside my head, that's what it is. That's a hundred percent accurate. Yes. (laughs) Well, maybe you guys balance each other out. Oh, we do. We do. But I think as a creative, you do have to have that balance, you know, like we're creative people. There's going to be some mess somewhere, whether we like it or not, because that's just how our brains work, you know, and you you have to be a little crazy to be in this industry, to be quite honest. I always say there's a bit of a delusion in this, you know, you have to be a big dreamer and make your vision really, really big and wide. And, you know, as far as your imagination can stretch you with your vision, but at the same time, how do we have actionable steps to, to get us to where we want to go. And so if you do have a little type A in you, it can, it can really help you. Yeah. I think. And <laughs> yeah. if you don't, that's, it's great to have a coach or a mentor or somebody to kind of give you those like steps along the way, because otherwise I think it does become just chaos yeah. sometimes. That, I think that is essential if to for a producer specifically to have both, like mm-hmm. it is creative, but you also need to have like the business, the analytical mind as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's data, not drama, right? Looking at (laughs) what is actually happening instead of like, how do I emotionally feel about that? Which is something I talk about with my clients all the time, like Mm. in regards to representation Mm -hmm. and stuff, a lot of them start freaking out about different things. And it's like, well, what is the actual data of this situation? Mm, Like how many auditions did you actually get from your agent or manager? Or how many, how often did they not reply to your email? Or did it just happen one time when you're creating a story in your head. Yeah, I love, I love that it. because that's and that's something that can be taught. You know, like you said, that's something you help your clients like change their mindset on because I know for me, like that's how I think how I think. And I think it's something that I did teach myself over the years and really worked on is like, you know, you can you're going to feel emotions about things. You can't help that. And you should let yourself right. feel them. But you can't let that control your actions like motivate, you know, how you your reaction a situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm very good at I've learned to be very good at like compartmentalizing and kind of logicking myself (laughs) through things, you know? And yeah, and it's 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 so helpful because then you don't get caught up in something. You don't get, you know, depressed over that audition that you didn't book because you've attached so much emotion to it. And yeah, but it's it's definitely something that can be learned. So listeners, if you're like, oh, I'm an emotional wreck, like, no, you can you can learn how to have this mindset. I love that you said that, Tessa. I, yeah. I feel 100% the same. It's something I've, with age <laughs> and <laughs> maturing, I've learned. I, I'm not like an emotion, like emotional outburst person, but inside it, it's like, very, it can like very much boil up when dealing with like pressures on set or whatever work. And you have to like, you know, reel it in <laughs> and and think of, all right, all right, I don't have to let this situation control how I'm feeling. That's exactly like what I try to tell myself. And something you just got to practice, guys, like how to just stay zen or 
or take a breath and then really just break it down and let yourself have that moment. Like if you need a moment to just cry it out, go cry it out. Go, go, like take that moment yourself and then come back refreshed and not bogged with emotion. Because if you are emotional naturally, that's okay. Like go, let, go have your emotion time, <laughs> you know? We <laughs> often feel like we, um, you know, have to be so put together all the time. And we do, you know, in this industry need to present ourselves in a certain way and be professional and be, you know, engaging, but we also are allowed to be human beings and have different colors inside of us. And I think, you know, there, it, it, it's a balance between getting your emotions out and taking that time for yourself mm -hmm. to then go back to the project, go back to the conversation with fresh eyes and yes. say, you know, what is the next step to navigate this situation? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I always, I always tell my clients, you know, take, take the time for yourself. And that goes for the good things too. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times we blow through our wins, right. And we don't celebrate them. And it's like, you have to take time to actually feel that emotion right. and give yourself that moment to take in the good and the joy. Cause so much of the time we're just looking for what's the next thing, what's the next thing, instead of right. taking time to enjoy the accomplishments that we've already made. And you know, be proud of ourselves, which I think is so important. Yes. I think there could be a fear that comes with that, you know, like, do I deserve to really appreciate this win? Like, I need to just focus on the next thing. Like, I could see myself thinking that like, okay, that was great. That was nice. All right. So where's my next gig? Where's my next, you know, like, job? And I feel that it's not the right way to think about it. You you need to trust that the universe is working with you, you know, mm -hmm. in a, a little <laughs> woo woo there. But it, it's just, I think, yeah, if you don't, then you'll, you won't be happy. You need a, yeah. you need a, that's why you're doing it, right? Um, booking these yeah. wins or working on these I like projects. to always say that you, you get to celebrate your wins or you get to do it. It's not that you need to do it. You're, you're allowed to, you get that opportunity to celebrate where you're at in your career. And I do think it's, you know, daily gratitude practice, that kind of thing really can help center you and create just more of a positive mindset in your day. And it's not to say that you're not going to have low lows because mm -hmm. you, you very well may and feel those things, but to practice gratitude for the things that you are doing for yourself, the things that are happening in positive momentum is so important. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to D'Angelo's gratitude podcast. Tess and yeah. I listen to it. We try, I try to now like every day because it's a quick like 10 minutes and he shouts out gratitude tips or I just love it. He gets me like all Zen in the zone. So I, that's awesome. It's super yeah. important. And it, and it does, it starts your day with like a positive mental shift, especially like if you're like me and you wake up with these really vivid, crazy dreams, guys, <laughs> it's just like, it's a struggle. I'm just like, what is happening? Why am I having like this stressful two hour movie before I get up? But it's, it, you know, as a writer creative, <laughs> I think that's what happens. The, yeah. the writing can kind of like start to filter in through your sleep and, or, you know, especially for me. So I think you got to find a way to clear it. And, and especially in the morning when you want to reset and you have things and people to meet. So, I and by agree. the way, listeners, if you didn't, oh, she has her cat in the screen. Listeners, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh. cat lady here. Katie. I'm like, no. <laughs> I, he doesn't usually do that. Sorry. No, that's fine. He just wanted to say hi. My cat does the same thing sometimes. <laughs> um, but listeners, if you didn't already know, um, the podcast Carolina was just talking about with D'Angelo Thompson is Gratitude is a Journey. That's his uh, daily podcast, just a few minutes long. And then he also has a video podcast on YouTube that we were at recently a guest on, which is Beauty and Gratitude. And it's like a little plus sign, so Beauty plus Gratitude. So um, you can find those on our website too. We have links to them and everything, but yeah. Just shouting That's that awesome. out. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah. yeah. yeah Very great. cool. Um, but I'd love to go back, Jenna, to your coaching and stuff. Like, how did you get started with that? What made you want to do that? What's that journey been like? Yeah. So, um, you know, after college, I went to school for theater um, and I moved to New York City because I thought that's what you're supposed to do as mm -hmm. an actor. I wanted to do theater and stuff. And I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I basically <laughs> fell on my face. Um, 
eventually I, I got involved in some, you know, good small theater companies and stuff, but I kind of fell into producing theater because I didn't know how to get an agent or a manager. I didn't know how to really make things happen for myself. I just thought, well, if they keep doing good work and putting good work out there, then somebody will eventually discover me. Mm-hmm. And while that happens for some people, lucky them, it doesn't happen that way for most yeah. people in what I've <laughs> experienced. You have to like take action for yourself and your career. You have to build relationships, maintain relationships, potentially pitch yourself to representation, those kinds of things. So when I moved to LA um, and I got back into acting after working in casting for a little while, I of course focused on the craft at first a lot to get my skills back to where I wanted them to be. But I started seeking out support of like, how do I make this work? Cause I'd learned a lot about the business through producing and through casting, but I knew I was missing a piece as an actor. So I started working with a coach and, um, through working with that coach, I ended up, they asked me to coach for them once I had been with them for a while. And at first I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm not qualified to do this, but, um, I started doing it and I loved it. And, um, I was just ready to go off on my own right before the pandemic hit. Of course. <laughs> yeah. of course. Um, but yeah, it's been about almost five years now that I've been, been coaching and I really love it because I think it's, I'm able to help people who are just like me, who just have the drive and have the, um, experience. Um, but they don't really know how to like make it work in the professional aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so helpful to have another set of eyes and to have like, I, I like a cheerleader kind of to cheer you on and tell you, these are the things you're doing right. And these are the things that we can tweak to make stronger. And also if you're scared to do this thing, I'll hold your hand. Like, Mm -hmm. let's do this together. Let's make this happen. Um, so it's really rewarding for me to see my clients grow and and all of that. Sorry, that was long winded. No, that's perfect. (laughs) I mean, that's amazing because it's like, you know, everybody needs somebody to help them, whether that's a manager, a mentor, a coach. And like, it's tough to know who to seek out, you know, like people say you should have a mentor and it's like, okay, well, where do I find said mentor? <laughs> like yes. how, who, you know, or like even a manager, obviously that's not always easy to find. And sometimes they don't really do that. Some do, some don't. So I think a totally. coach is like a great way to go, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of managers now are so busy, you know, and everybody works differently, of course, but, you know, they are maybe not going to teach you some of the things that actors need to do or should be doing because they're not actors. They, Mm -hmm. they actually don't know some of those things and managers can be so amazing. And also you want to help support them do their job the best way that they can. So what do you need to be doing in order to to help support them. Right. Um, and they might not always tell you that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, having a coach, I think, helps with that. And I really try to take a holistic approach too and really look at you as a human being and what are your personal goals? Where do you want, what is your vision for yourself? Because everyone's different and, and that can change throughout time too. Yeah. You don't have to only want to be a series regular. Like that's not the only valid path for people. Right. Yeah, that's so important. I I like that you say you take a holistic approach because it's like, like business is something you could learn in like a lecture class if you needed to, right? But like understanding it and understanding how to not let it drive you crazy (laughs) and to make it really apply to your specific career is so important. And like another coach actually that we had on the show, Mandy Mae Cheatham, she has the same kind of approach. It's like, it's really from the mindset out, you know? Um, and she listeners, if you didn't listen to her episode, uh, I have to look up what season and episode that was, but head on back. Um, she is currently doing that as well. She has, um, I think she's called it the trampoline now. Um, but it's like a whole community of, yeah, like how to, how to figure out the mindset of things and then apply that to the business. And I think that's such a, like a healthy way (laughs) to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Mindset is so important. And I think, you know, how you see yourself in this industry and how you see others. And also one of the big things that I talk about the most is be a human being, Mm -hmm. you know, this business is all about relationships, whether you're an actor, a filmmaker, a producer, it's all about who, who sees you, who understands you and can you maintain and build those relationships as a person? Yeah. And I think a lot of the time we, we put people on pedestals and think, well, they're so much better than I am, or they're this or that. And it's like, how can you 
you know, share with them what makes you unique, but also how do you add value to their lives? Mm -hmm. What, what can you learn about them where you can, um, help them on their journeys. Cause we all need help. We're just people, right. Yeah. Whether you can, you know, write a letter of recommendation for their kid to get into college. That's a way to add value. Whether you can tag them on your social media and say, Hey, I loved your short film. It was so amazing. That's a way to connect with the director. You know, we can always add value to other people. And I think a lot of the times actors, especially make ourselves, we make ourselves small. We mm -hmm. think, well, I don't have anything to offer. Right. And not only do we have our talent, but we have our humanity and who we are as people. Yeah. I love that you yes. said that. Cause that reminds me of, um, I think it was you and my episode, Carolina, the oh. imposter syndrome one that just came out, <laughs> um, that we were talking about, like, you know, if you are asking something of someone to give something as well. And I remembered yes. you saying like, well, if you don't have anything to give and I was like, hold up, <laughs> you always have something to give, but yeah, it's just like, you know, getting creative with it. We always have something to give if you really, get creative. Like you said, even just your humanity, you know, tagging people yeah. on social media, whatever that you can help them out like that. Yeah. Yeah. Making people feel something, yes. expressing gratitude for something mm -hmm. that they've done. Make, making people feel is such a gift if it's genuine. So that's a way that you can add value to somebody to say, Hey, your work really mattered to me and it impacted me. That's, that's enough. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I love yeah. that you said that. That is so, so important. And um, as a whole, like whenever you're connecting with someone, show that that gratitude and appreciation. That's going to just, just, yeah, be, a, that's a great way to start. And that's like, I mean, connecting with you, Jenna, exactly. Like you really helped a lot of people this past year. So, yeah. you know, navigate through that and what you're doing. So that's like, Again, like so cool, and and we're grateful that you can come on with us. Thank you. Yeah, be a no, part of. Yes. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, I just always tell people like it's it's not just saying hey, I loved your podcast. That's great, but it's like say the what and the why. Mm -hmm. So what did you love about it, and why does that matter to you? And that's going to have such a greater impact on somebody instead of just saying I loved your podcast. Hey, I loved your episode about imposter syndrome. That really resonated with me because, and it made me feel this. And all of a sudden you're going to be like mm, warm and fuzzies. Yeah. <laughs> feel really good. <laughs> Plus to be honest, then you know, the person really did listen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to take a little turn here. So I want to talk about your SAG advocacy and what that's sure. all about. I am non-union and Tessa is SAG eligible, but she is holding off at the moment. And yeah, like, just just tell us what that world is about and why you are so about it. <laughs> yeah. Tell us why you are about it, girl. I'm I'm very pro-union. I'm really open about that. Um, and I would consider you both pre-members because I would love to think that eventually you'll be <laughs> members with me someday. Um, so I think uni the union is so important because us actors are so passionate about what we do. And whether it's the actors union SAG after or talking about the WGA or the DGA. Right. That goes for directors, industry. writers, the, uh, for right. everyone listening. The aunt in those Kansas, of us, those are yeah. unions for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Unions for the DGA, the director's union, the WJ for writers, you know, the unions are there created by the members. So, so I, an actor am somebody who is helping to run my union. Right. And it protects me from myself ultimately, mm -hmm. because I love what I do so much that I will work for free. Mm. Guess what? that does not pay my bills. Yeah. That does not get health insurance. That does not, you know, pay for my future child's education. So it's really important to have unions advocating for us because otherwise we'll just do whatever, right? Because right. we love it so much. Um, I really love working with the union. I'm, I'm part of the Next Gen Performers Committee in Los Angeles and the National Board, which is all about, you know, getting um, younger people involved with the union. And we do so many fun events like drag queen bingo. And um, but we also do educational events like um, teaching people how to shoot things on their iPhone that they can eventually submit to festivals. Um, and, you know, I ran mental health panels uh, last year, at, well, in 2019. <laughs> <at the union. laughs> um, but I, I just think it's really, it's, 
a sense of community, of course, because we're all in it together. And sag After also isn't just actors. It's also um, broadcasters, it's hosts, it's um, so many other entertainment professionals as well, which is really cool. And um, they go and negotiate when I say they, it means union members and who are actors or members, dancers, whatever, and our staff go to negotiate with the, the AMPTP and basically figure out our contracts for us so that we decide, you know, what things are we willing to give up and what things do we really want to put our foot down for and fight for so that we have certain minimums or protections like intimacy coordinators on sets now, or, um, making sure during COVID there, there was a lot of negotiations about like, what did a safe set look like and how were we going to decide or a safer set? How are we, were we going to decide what was okay and what wasn't, um, you know, actors are getting paid to do COVID tests right now. So you get paid 250 bucks if you're on a film and TV project and you have to test for COVID. So anyway, I could go on and on. What do you want to know? <laughs> well, I love that. Like, so I feel like the mindset with SAG is so mixed. Everybody has such a different opinion. Um, you know, you're kind of, I feel like in general, Todd is an actor, like, you know, get that eligibility, but then hold out as long as you can, which is the mindset that I had for so long. But then I, I just recently had a shift where I was like, okay, but wait, I'm not booking this like abundance of non-union jobs. Like it's nice to have, you know, the option of either way, but like, I'm not making any money. I mean, I'm making some, but not enough. And I am getting at least the SAG auditions, even if I'm not I'm only booking a couple of them, you know, so I'm at the point now where my next one will be my must join. So I'm like, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to take yeah. that next step and go in, you know, but a lot of actors you do here being unsatisfied with SAG and feeling like, you know, oh, this union doesn't do anything for me like other industry unions do, or even like IOTC or something, because, you know, same industry, different uh, branch, but because IOTC for listeners, if you don't know, that's more like the, the crew kind of um, union. But yeah, so, but it's nice to hear like all the things that you as a SAG member, because reminder, yeah, the members are the, the ones, you know, running it as well. Like we are actors. We are the union. And the union is yeah. Us. yeah. And it's a nice reminder oh. to see like what you're fighting for and what is getting accomplished. Yeah. I would say a lot of those people who complain have probably never been to a meeting mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe they have been to one, but like, how are, are they volunteering their time to change things? Mm -hmm. Because it, you know, we're up against these massive corporations that have millions of dollars behind them, right. That we're trying to negotiate with. Right. And a negotiation is just that it's a negotiation. You, you don't, give, get everything that you want. You often right. have to give up things in order to get something right. Yeah. You know, this as producers, you know, you're negotiating what the budget's going to be, you know, and you might have to say, oh, we, we have one less day if we don't have it in the budget. Right. It's the same thing for negotiating, yeah. um, with, with the AMPTP and, and such. Um, I also think the, the idea that, you know, you should stay SAG eligible for as long as you can and there's and do as much work as you can non-union is kind of an old misnomer at this point. Mm -hmm. um, you have to ultimately decide what's right for you. And yes. I will never say there is one path and this is the right thing. But I will also say, I think in the past, you know, there were really great non-union indie projects. That's not really the case anymore. And the union also has been making huge strides recently to make things um, easier for producers to produce in low budgets. Mm -hmm. There's now the SAG after a micro budget film agreement, which is for members specifically to produce with a very small budget, very easily, basically no paperwork at all. It's like one little form. Yes. I was um, just hearing about this. I'm very yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and a lot of these younger members are like really advocating for all of these changes to happen. So again, like getting involved and saying, Hey, this isn't working for us. And then things happen. You know, we have the new influencer agreement so that influencers can now get protections under the union so that they're not being taken advantage of by these big brands and corporations. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think, um, you know, I think a lot of times people say, well, commercially, there's so much more non-union work. There is a lot of non-union work commercially, but it does not pay remotely what union work does commercially right. and the union commercial contract is the most worked contract out of any contract in the union. So there are union commercials happening. Yeah. Um, people just 
you know, if they're not booking them or if they're not getting the opportunities, get frustrated. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not personally very passionate about commercials, so I don't really care for myself. <laughs> but well, it's like you um, said about like saving you from yourself as an actor. Like I took a workshop with Stuart Stone, who's a commercial uh, casting director. I used to work for Stuart. Oh, that's I was awesome! Just casting. <laughs> That's amazing. Assistant for years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I really liked him. And his Aww. class was super helpful, but like there was kind of a really depressing moment in it because he was like, you guys, like you're kind of the, re- like you're screwing yourself here with the non-union commercial work because everybody's so willing to take up all that work for no money. So of course the companies are not going to raise the rates of course, like people, you know, they know they can get away with it. And it's because of us as actors, not standing up for ourselves, you know, and not forcing them to go union or to pay the higher rates or whatever it is. So yeah, that really stuck with me though. I was like, Oh, you're right. Okay. Maybe I'm not going to fight to stay (laughs) non-union. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you come in. I'm Shane O'Hare of the Geekscape Games Podcast, the number one video game podcast on the Geekscape.network. Join myself, Derek Krenevelt, and a guest every fortnight as we discuss video game news, video game reviews, and dissections. That's Geekscape Games every two weeks on Geekscape.net. Yeah, I mean, I I generally think, you know, if it, it, once you feel like you have your craft really well under your belt yeah. and you feel like you are ready to compete and you have a, a, some experience non-union wise, join the union. There's so many things that are beneficial to you. Um, and being in the union, there's just access to a lot of information and resources. A lot of people don't take advantage of those resources, but they are there. Um, so uh, I would encourage you to to think about it seriously, but of course you have to make the decision that feels right for you Mm -hmm. and your personal finances and everything like that. Why does it cost three grand to join? I mean, I don't know the technical everything about that, but, um, money doesn't grow on trees, right? You know, I think we hear about this with the union a lot with health insurance and people say, you know, a lot of negative things about, well, why can't more actors be getting health insurance through the union, all these different things. And it's like, we have to pay thing for things, mm-hmm. you know, we have to pay for the rent of the building. We have to pay for our staff members who, um, are all of our legal experts who actually negotiate our contracts that all has to be paid for. Um, any of the workshops that we do, you know, we have staff that has to be paid for all of those things. Um, so I mean, that's my kind of quick answer to that question. That's great. Um, but you know, people get upset that like, you know, you have to make a certain amount of money in SAG after to get health insurance. Well, of course you do at any other business, you know, you have to make, you have to be working a certain number of hours and making money for that company. Cause that company then has to pay the insurance Insurance. company. Exactly, It's not free. Right. (laughs) Like, you know, our healthcare system in this country is totally broken. So that's not the fault of your union that, you know, and not to say that changes don't need to happen with our health care, you know, right. um, with our health insurance within the union too. I'm sure there are changes that need to be made and I'm not really privy to all the details of that, but I just think that general threshold people, <clears throat> you know, think everyone should get insurance. And it's like, if you're only making $18,000 a year as an actor, you know, that's, that's not a lot of money that you're contributing to then have the union pay these insurance providers for your policy. Mm -hmm. Got it. No. And that's like, you know, I think it's important for actors and and people who are struggling with the whole, is this fair? Like I, I barely am scraping by as an actor. Why is it this way? And like, what are the potential benefits? And, you know, like you said, that it just, it, it will circle back to you because, you have to, it's just like, yeah, it's like joining a job because again, if you get hired for a normal, like a normal company, a normal job, (laughs) like they'll tell you if you get health benefits or not, but they're also paying, you know, you're getting, you're working at a certain rate too. And that's Mm -hmm. why not all jobs come with health insurance. And so like, you know, it's just easy to think, well, I feel like I'm being cheated by, you know, 
just making it as an actor. Now I have to pay this sum of money. Why? Where is it going? Like, what is, you know, what is the process? And I think you breaking it down like that kind of educates maybe some listeners about it. And myself, yeah. like, I, I'm just genuinely curious. So <laughs> I'm going to ask these things. Yeah. 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 Go for it. I mean, and I don't have all the answers. Like, sure. you know, I, it's so I've only, I've been involved for about three years now, really intimately, but you know, there's so many different committees, you know, there's a women's committee, there's, Love. you know, a seniors committee, there's all these different people who are working. And then there's all the negotiating committees. So there's like a commercials negotiating committee. There's the theatrical negotiating committee. And, you know, I'm not on any of those. And you, right. you know, there are board members. I'm not a board member. So like th there's so many different ways that you can get involved and volunteer. And, um, what I'm really passionate about is getting younger people involved because at most meetings, you know, the people are like 50 plus mm -hmm. and that's amazing that they're showing up and yay. But I want everyone to be involved and, yeah. and to also it's our future. That is, right? no, that like, is so cool, Jenna. That is really yeah, cool that you. you're thinking like that. And that is so important. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about this. Cause like, I didn't know that there were board meetings like this and, um, to attend like a general meeting, is it like a community council? Like, can anyone just come in and list, be a listener, obviously not sit on the board and maybe speak? How? Yeah. What? What's that like about? Yeah. The short answer is it depends. Like there are closed board meetings, but then there are also open meetings. So there's the W's and W's, which is the wages and working conditions meetings, mm -hmm. which anyone can attend. And I highly recommend you attend at least one at some point. Um, yeah. And then the different committees there, I think they're usually closed meetings for all the committees. Um, but you can volunteer once you're a member to, to be on these committees. Um, and they're pretty cool. You volunteer and, to, to be on them. Yeah. Okay. And that's the other thing, like everybody, all the union members, they're just volunteers. Like the president of SAG-AFTRA, Gabrielle Carteris, she's a volunteer wow. and that woman works wow so much. I can't even tell you for us, for our rights, for our like ability to work in this industry and get paid. And, you know, all, all of those people, they're just volunteers and it's really incredible. And I always say like, if you haven't ever volunteered, like you can even just volunteer sometimes for a one day event or something and get a taste of what, what's going on. But it's really a beautiful thing if you think about it. It's like members working for members. Mm -hmm. really and do you have to be union to volunteer? Sorry, Tessa. That's okay. Most of the time, yes, but there definitely are union events that you can attend um, being a pre-member. Um, it, <clears throat> it just depends what it is. Usually um, attendance is with uh, already like a full-fledged member, but um, it just depends on the specific event and what's going on. Cool. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. I love that you keep saying pre-member. <laughs> yeah. She's on it. I'm just planting that seed yes. for you. <laughs> Again, you know, when why should you pay for the union? Well, you're going to get union actors with great talent and like, you know, protection all around for everyone. So I do think yeah. it's an important thing that, you know, people learn to distinguish why and like, yes, it's going to cost, but here are the bonuses. And this is mm -hmm. what the whole contract's going to entail. Yeah. And there's actually, there are new paths to membership that a oh, lot wow. of people aren't even aware of. Oh, sure. um, and without, <laughs> I don't, again, I don't want to like totally butcher them because I, I might, but, but um, there are other paths where like you can actually work certain contracts and then you become SAG after E-verified. So you mm -hmm. actually, there's no, you don't become SAG eligible at all. You just take your paperwork and you take it to SAG after and say, I, I worked this project, they e-verify it and they say, okay, you're ready to join and you pay your, your union initiation fee and you are a full-fledged member. Holy There's shit. no SAG after in between period. So I think that's like, if you do three SAG after student films within a certain time and then, and, or there's another couple things that you could book. Yeah. So I don't know exactly what they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah. that would yeah, be there great are other to have a breakdown. I think, yeah, if we can get connected with someone like that and for filmmakers totally. specifically, I think that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. I'll, I'll hook you up. Hook us up, girl. <laughs> <laughs> But a reminder to listeners to um, just, you know, if you have these questions and stuff, 
uh, go on the website. Like I know it's a lot of stuff to, to, to sift through, but like, that's how I finally like cleared up any questions I had about where I was in the process and like was able to like actually contact SAG mm-hmm. and be like, here's my name. I don't have a member yet, number yet, but like what, how many do I have left? How many, am I, am I must join? I don't even know. Like it's been so long, you know, and they helped oh, clear that up for me. But, like, I found that number through the website, and I found, you know, how to figure that all out through the website. So it is there, guys. Just, you know, just search it in the in the uh, search box, and it'll get you eventually where you need to go on the website. Totally. And I will say, you know, we want people to become members. Like, we, it's not that we, you know, SAG-AFTRA members want non-union members, SAG-eligible people to become members. So, you know, the union is there to support you in making that transition and stuff. So, you know, if you're definitely non-union, I probably wouldn't call the union too much, but if you, you know, think you're SAG eligible or maybe, or you're not sure if you could be like, definitely give them a call. Like that's what they're there for. They want to help you. That's really good to hear from both of you. Yeah. And there's actually there's a chat function now too. So if you nice. like, don't like talking on the phone, there's a chat function online as well. I appreciate cool. that so much as a person that hates talking on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that is so good to hear. So listeners, um, also let us know, DM us um, if you have any specific questions. And again, we can't make promises, but hopefully we can get connected and, and get some answers because yeah. <laughs> again, a lot of this is, Ask, finding out things that you didn't even know that you were to ask about or like just a lot of the things you said Jenna right now like there are things I, I wasn't even like thinking about when it came to SAG so it's cool. I will think of some awesome female filmmaker yes. actors that can come on I already have one person in mind for you so, so excited season 10 baby wrap it up with some fun things more about you Jenna like what are what's exciting you these days what projects are you working on get us to know a little bit of what people can find when they look you up on Instagram you know yeah what's going on? I mean I'm, I am honestly really passionate about Actors Rise and, and my community that I've been creating. It's, it really has become my baby this past year. And of course, as an actor, I'm still auditioning. And I, I just shared the short film that um, I helped produce and yeah. started in Boss Babes is Yay. making the festival circuit right now. Yes. And it's really fun. It's all about, um, it's a dark comedy about multi-level marketing. And uh, <laughs> I love that. Yes, it's, it sounds yeah, hilarious. It's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's loosely based on a, I mean, it's not, it's inspired by an experience experience of myself and the writer director Corey Clifford and her um partner Ryan Lagarde who who wrote it and they they lovingly I basically t- talked my friend Corey into doing this multi-level marketing company and luckily we both me- remained friends and left <laughs> That's yeah. the multi-level marketing company. <laughs> and then she she and Ryan wrote this amazing short about it. And they wrote me in as this really fun character. So um, oh my God, I'm you can check so that excited. out. Boss Babes. Okay, we need Boss to be on babes. the lookout. Send this to you if it's ever like premiering yeah. somewhere. We want to they, Yeah, they, I'll, I'll yeah. send you the Instagram. And I, it's bossbabesfilm.com, I think. And um, That's amazing. It's really funny. And then... Um, yeah, Actors Rise, if, if people want to join the Facebook group, there's like a lot of community stuff happening there, in there, lots of resources. I do um, industry expert, you know, question and answer sessions. Uh, so, you know, we have casting directors in there. We have agents and managers, that kind of thing. So yeah. that's Actors Rise on Facebook. Um, and if they want to learn more about, about me and my services on my Instagram, I'm everywhere at that Doolittle. Um, I joke, I'm a Doolittle who does a lot. Love that. <laughs> Great tagline, baby. Great tagline. But yeah, that's kind of, I'm I'm auditioning and hanging out with my cat, Bug, and my oh. husband when he's in town. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. This was such, like, such a helpful for us even. Like, I think we both Seriously. learned a lot in this episode. Always. So, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for teaching us. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yay. Uh, Yeah. Well, you guys are lovely. And I mean, just know that what you're doing is such a service to people as well. And I'm so glad that I've discovered you now and we're in each other's network. And, you know, maybe you guys will come into the Actors Rise Facebook group at some point and I can interview you or something. Yeah, I would love that. I don't think I knew there was a Facebook group before. So yeah, definitely check that out. 
Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we'll have Yay. to connect. And I love that community. We're we're all about community here with the Fem mm-hmm. Fam. So yeah, love that's it. amazing. Oh, and if people want to subscribe to the newsletter, they yes. can do that going to bitly.com <laughs> backslash actors rise newsletter or finding the link in my link tree on Instagram at that do little. So there you go. Oh <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Pimp or even listeners, if you want to DM us, I, cause I subscribe to it. I've done this for other people. I'll just forward you like the latest one and you can click the link in there too. Aww, Tessa, I've done that you. as well. So yeah, <laughs> listeners, whatever's easier for you, you know, we'll get you hooked up. Yeah, absolutely, fam.